Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. So I just had a conversation that just I felt led to do this in my spirit. Um, I'm going to testify about my tattoos that I have. You can see them here on my inside of my forearms. And uh, I'm going to be very vulnerable with this testimony. I've told parts of it, but I really felt like the Lord wanted me to share this because some of you are going to see this and you're going to identify with what I'm saying. Quick background. Um, last year was the first time I had seen my father in about 26 years. All right. So I grew up my whole life without my father. Um, I remember living in the shelter with my mom and I would ask, you know, when is daddy coming? When is daddy coming? And she would tell me, ah, he's coming tomorrow. He's coming tomorrow. And so we lived in a shelter and we moved um, to this little apartment. I was going to the school, getting fights all the time. And uh, I just struggled with my self-esteem uh, because of, you know, things between me and my mom. I never, she had to work so hard and because she had been through so much as some of you seen in her testimony, she wasn't the kind of person to give a lot of affection and love. And you know, she, she'll tell you, you know, she said she abused me and things like that physically and, and verbally, you know, physically with the, the whoopings and things like that. And so I was just like, my mind was messed up. And at 11 years old, she had put us in homeschool and I was working a full-time job. I'm talking about hard labor, full-time job, uh, busting down drywall, painting apartments. And my boss, um, he was like a, a Polish guy. He was pretty verbally abusive. And I looked up to him because I, I didn't have a father figure, you know, and um, he had me working like eight, nine hours a day for like $2 an hour. And... I joined the army uh, at 19 because the truth is I went to school and I felt like I knew I wasn't dumb, but I didn't feel smart. And so I was like, man, I'm just going to join the army. I can't do this. So I joined the army and because I had never got love, I was always looking for love and I got married early. Pretty much, you know, and, and I, I got to say this first. I have nothing bad to say about my children's mothers. They are wonderful, amazing, strong women of God. I'm praying for them. We have good relationships. We have good communication. But this is the reality, and they will tell you. So, you know, I, I got married early, and as soon as I got married, I got sent to Iraq um, for a whole year deployment. Things were bad between me and her. Came back. Things were worse. Then they sent me right back to Afghanistan for another year. And that was it. That was like that killed that marriage. It was over, you know, two years away. And I had the two kids at the time. And uh, man, people laugh because they see like, they'd be like, man, bro, you, you have five kids and I got one on the way. But the reason why I always wanted to have so many kids is because I felt like a kid's love for you is gonna be unconditional because I love my mother regardless. And so I said, man, if, if I have kids, I'm, I'm gonna be surrounded by love, you know what I'm saying, in my home. And the truth is, and me and God has had this conversation before, and I don't expect everybody to agree, but I made my children an idol. Because the truth is I needed to get healing from the things that happened to me as a child, but I didn't get that healing. I kept trying to fix it. I kept trying to, you know, find a solution and it would just get worse and worse and worse because God allowed the idols to fall down. And so I remember the the day that, you know, my ex-wife was packing the bags and taking the kids and they were moving to a different state. And I remember I just sat there staring at the wall, man, for hours like for hours man I sat there and I cried and I cried and I cried I began to wonder about you know my father like man he went through this and, and, and I hadn't seen him since I was 7 years old 
And so I had to go through, you know, th this is one thing why I don't have no respect for a man who don't see his kids. I would fly all the way from Virginia to Chicago every chance I could, I could get, right, to see my kids. Now, instead of me sitting there and seeking God for healing, I would just jump in from woman to woman to woman. And things got so bad, right, that I wanted to kill myself, man. I had struggled with suicidal thoughts when I was younger. And then it just got worse when I got older. It was like, man, look, you just making a mess of your life, man. Just, you just, just go ahead and just stop. Oh, man. And so... I was sitting in the house all alone after work, man, and it was like so much, it was so much warfare against my mind, man, so much negativity, so many voices, and you guys know the story when I was 12, how I climbed the bridge and I was going to jump off on the highway and kill myself, but I remember I felt the hand of God grab the back of my neck and he said, son, don't do it. I got a purpose for you when I climbed down from the bridge. But here I was again at 22. And every day, all I thought about was killing myself. All I thought about was your failure. And so I remember I went and I got these tattoos. Right there it says, my lady. And right there it says, ma'am. And I got some on my chest some on my arm and I would sit there in the house in the dark and I would just feel this 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 evil this heaviness around me just talking to me and I would look down and, and I would see Miriam and I would I would clench my fist and I would look down and I would see my daughter's name and I said man I my kids are not gonna remember me as a quitter and that right there, I would just look at it and it was like, that's all that's going to keep me alive. And, and, and here's the crazy part. I didn't learn my lesson right then and there. I, I was surviving, but I wasn't healing. And some of us, we go through life and we're just surviving. If I could, if I could just make it through this day, whatever, whatever I got to do, whether it's sex, drugs, let me, let me call that person just so I could survive and not go crazy. But God came so you can have life and life more abundantly. It's not his will for you to just barely make it and survive every day. But I didn't turn to him and so I got into another relationship right away. And she got pregnant and same thing, man. It was like, it's, I always tell people, it's like the children of Israel in the wilderness. They had to keep going around and around until they passed the test. And after me and her were together and it was just, just bad because we were both unhealthy. She will tell you, we, we both weren't healed. We got together for the wrong reasons. They sent me to South Korea and South Korea was one of the worst, worst years of my life, man. And out of, you know, out of respect, I don't tell my whole testimony, man, but I, I got hurt, man. And it was, it was just bad. And I started thinking to myself, man, like, all right, Lord, by that time I was serving him and I was trying to live right. I'm saying, Lord, I'm serving you. Like I'm preaching. I'm doing everything the pastor is telling me to do. And my life ain't getting better. It's getting worse. And so the same thing, I would sit there in South Korea, not knowing what's going on back in the States. And I would cry and I would feel frustrated and I would feel bitter. And I say, man, God, like, why are you allowing this to happen? Like, you told me you had a purpose for me. You told me you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And here I am, I'm trying to live right, but it's just getting worse. It feel like every time I try to do the right thing, it gets worse. Every time I try to love, it gets worse. Every time I try to do right, I get hurt. I ain't never been so broken. And the Lord told me, he said, I had to... I had to break you into a million pieces so I could feed you to a million people. That was before I had videos going viral. That's when, when two people was probably, maybe, maybe like two people was watching my videos. 
And what they and what they don't see. Y'all wonder why I get frustrated when people talk about me. Y'all wonder why I, I talk back and, and I respond to people because what they don't see is all them times I was sitting in the house crying out to Jesus about to lose my mind. And all I could do was just, I was so broken. All I could do is I didn't even know what to pray. I could just whisper his name. And his presence would come into that dark place. His light would come in to that dark place. And that was the only thing that was keeping me going. And he would speak to me. And then I would take the word that he just downloaded into me. And I would wipe the tears away. And I would turn the phone around and I hit live. And I would start preaching exactly what God just gave me to encourage me. But they didn't know. They didn't know what was behind. See, he, he was taking the test and making it a testimony. He was taking the mess and making it a message, but people didn't know. And so eventually... I went through so much stuff and like I said, I'm not going to tell you all the details because that's out of respect, you know, and the privacy of other people who are involved. But one day they'll probably come and they'll tell you. And my next two younger children, Maria and Noah, they left and I was in Kentucky and they moved to Chicago. And so I went through the whole thing all over again, my heart broken, and I'm by myself. And the year that I was, before I got out the army, man, I was just sitting there alone and I would have to walk past my kids' bedrooms and I would see their beds just empty. I would see the rooms just empty. I would think about my son, how he used to run down the stairs and how he would say, you know, daddy, I love you. And he would come give me a hug. And I thought about all the times I would go to go to work. And right before I went to work, he would come to the door and, you know, he would just give me a kiss and give me a hug, man. And it broke me. And I was crying like every night. And every night I felt like quitting. But here's the thing. Some people won't believe me. Religious folks won't believe me. I stopped looking at my tattoos I stopped looking at this when I felt like I wanted to kill myself. And I started looking at this. For so long, this was my idol. And it's nothing wrong with finding motivation and doing the right thing and wanting to be a good father, but the foundation has to be Jesus. So I stopped looking at tattoos and, and I took my, my brokenness and I took my tears and I took my failures. And I would just pray and pray and pray and pray. And then some stuff happened, man. And I said, man, nobody's ever going to love me. I'm, I give up our relationships. I'm, I'm divorced twice. I got five kids. It's a wrap for me. I just stopped looking. My whole life. I just wanted to be loved, man. I just wanted to be the father that my father never was. I just wanted to give my kids something that I never had. And to this day, man, fortunately, all of my kids live in Chicago. And so I get to be there. I get my kids every weekend. When I was living in Kentucky, I don't I don't respect a man who don't see his kids. I would drive almost every weekend uh, on Friday, Friday afternoon. I would leave eight hour drive to Chicago, see my kids all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday, and then drive back late to Kentucky and have to be in formation at five o'clock in the morning. And I did that because I wanted to make the effort. And then I was going through all that stuff with the army all by myself. I didn't have nobody when I was getting ready to get out. You go through hell and come home and there's nothing. Just, just you and God. 
When I got out the army and I started driving back to Chicago after 13 years, I said, Lord, what's going on? I got five kids. How am I going to pay child support? How am I going to provide? What am I going to do? And don't you know I've been out the army since October, almost two years. And I haven't had to work since. And I take care of all my kids. <sighs> and not only that, you know, I have custody of my youngest too. <sighs> so that's why I worship God the way that I do and I praise him. Because in all of my mess, he's so good that he made it, he worked it out. That I could go in there tonight and I could kiss my son and my youngest daughter goodnight. And I could see my oldest kids every weekend. And I could be a father in their life. All right. He made that happen. He made that happen. And so that's why, you know, some people don't understand. They say, Marcus, you should do this. You should do that. But I made a deal with God. You guys heard my testimony about being in the shootouts. They shot the whole truck up, but, you know, there was bullet holes in the roof, bullet holes in the side. There's a bullet like stuck right here and, and none of the bullets hit me in Afghanistan and Iraq. And all those times I should have lost my life. I had a gun in my face so many times in my life. But God brought me through all of that to bring me right here to this moment. And that's why I am the way that I am. I told the Lord, whatever you want me to say, I'll say it. I'll do what other people don't want to do. I'll talk about the stuff that other people don't want to talk about. Whatever you need. And that's why Brother Marcus is the way that he is. It would be easy for me to get on here and just give y'all motivational speeches all the time. And get my likes up. I see preachers do it all the time. Every day they go live. God's going to bless you. The favor of God is on you. And people just eating that stuff up. But they're not, they're not healthy spiritually because they're not getting a full balanced diet. God is a God of balance. And many of us in America are out of balance. So I said that all that to say, God knows. God knows. He sees it all. What he's looking for is how you respond. I used to put my hope in my children. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get love. And I stopped looking at the tattoos. And I started getting in this. And this is the greatest love letter that has ever been written right here, man. So I don't care if you don't agree with me about doctrine. I don't care if you think that I'm a false prophet because one thing I know God is with me and nobody can take that from me. I know that he's with me, man. And that's why I don't care if people think that I'm crazy because I know God is real. If it wasn't for God, I would have killed myself, man. That's facts. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't care about crying in front of people because I, I know it's I know it's other people out there. And, and the trick of the enemy is to make you feel like you all alone, especially with men. To just make you bottle that stuff up inside and, and I ain't going to tell nobody and I'm, I'm just going to keep it locked in. And, and then what happens, you keep all that stuff in until you explode. And I remember I was that kind of person. People took my kindness for weakness and, and, and I had such anger inside of me. And that's why... When I was in the army, I used to go to the club on the weekend and it was for two reasons. We're going to find some women and we're going to fight. We used to go to the club to fight. And here's the thing. You'll often attract people who got the same stuff as you. I, I attracted other guys who had anger issues. And so we would go to the club and we, we fought people and, and instigated fights because we thought like, oh, this is cool. But the truth was, I was, it was therapy. I was getting the anger out of me. I want, I wanted to fight the biggest dude in the room. I wanted to swing on the biggest because I had all this anger inside of me. So I was looking at the tattoos and I was looking at the fight and I was looking at the sex and it was failing me. 
People look at the bottle, they look at the weed, and, and no matter how, like, no, it's not. I know that 100% that God is real. You might not agree with everything that I say and everything that I do, but one thing I know that God is real. Nobody could take that from me. But the thing that people don't like is it, it costs you something to follow God. And that's where people get stuck. God is not about rules and regulations, but when you follow him, there's a transformation that takes place. And so I got the tattoos because I thought like, man, this is what's going to keep me from killing myself. But this is what will keep you. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When you just get in his presence, man, I'm going to tell you, that's how you're going to know. That's how you're going to know God is real. If you want to know God is real, get around some people who worship, get around some people who get in his presence and you're going to feel, see, weed and drinking and sex, what does it do? What does it do? It gives you a feeling for a moment. While you having sex, it takes your mind away. When you smoking the weed, you, you feel you feel high, you getting lifted. When you get drunk, all right, it, it kind of takes away your inhibitions and, and you, you go to a different state of mind. But that is a substitute for what the presence of God will do. I'm telling you, it's a substitute. It's not as good. I've had a lot of sex in my life. I went to a lot of parties in my life, but it's a substitute. When I worship God, when I get in the presence of God, I, I feel something. People can say that, that I'm crazy all, I, all they want, but I know that it works. I feel God with me. It wasn't the drugs or, or, or drinking or sex that kept me from killing myself. It was the presence of God. All you got to do is say, God, if you real show me. And he going to show you, man. I'm sorry I got the ugly face on and I was over here crying crazy. But I just, I felt led. I was talking to one of my brothers, man. And, and I love this brother. He's a, He's got gifts. God wants to use him greatly. And, and he's going through a struggle. And I'm praying for him. And he just stirred something to me. And I said, man, I got to. I got to share it. I got I got to share my story again. I got to share my testimony again because people need to know because the problem is people don't want to get on here and be vulnerable. People want to just act like they got it all together all the time and and they just always had it right all the time. And you're doing people a disservice because they're going through stuff, too. They're crying, too. They're fighting battles in their marriage. They're fighting insecurities. They're fighting fears. But because nobody wants to be vulnerable, the Bible says we overcome by the words of our testimony. That's why I can get on here and I can cry and I can and I can do that because I'm trying to give God the glory and I'm trying to get you to understand he is real. Even if it sounds crazy to you, that's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But you got to do it. Nobody can do it for you. And I understand that churches... They, they give God a bad reputation, some churches. And I understand that some people, they give God a, a, a bad representation because they don't do it right. And they, and they bash people and they condemn people and they're ugly and they're fake and they're hypocritical. But that's why the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trial. I don't care what nobody else is doing. Brother, Brother Marcus don't care what no other church is doing, what nobody else is doing. I'm, 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 it's me and God. It's me and God. What do you have for me, God? What do you want to show me? I'm not defining my Christianity by what other people think and what other people say. I define it by what I know me and God have and that's it. And that's what you got to do. Don't try to be a Christian like so-and-so. Don't try to model your Christianity after a person. Model it after this. Just begin to read a little bit. Just begin to read. I tell everybody, this is what I tell them when they say, Brother Marcus, well, where should I start reading if, if I got to read, if you tell me to read the Bible? I always tell them start in the book of Romans. Start in the book of Romans. I'm going to go, guys, because I don't want to start talking some more and I get off crying like a big baby. But I will say this. I got people who can testify that Christian rap works because it's the heart behind it. All those all those stupid religious folks who killed a move of God. And I know some of you going to get mad because I said stupid, but it's facts. People are so ignorant. They claim to be Christians and, oh, God can't use this and God can't do that. God will use it. He will use it if your heart is right behind it. I have testimonies of people who they tell me all the time. They say, man, God used this and he used that and he used that. I love you guys, man. I got to go share this video with, with whoever you feel led to share it with, man, because they need to see it. And I know I had I had the ugly face on crying, but it's all good, man. I love you guys. I mean that from my heart. I probably can't talk to every single one of you, you know, but but just know, uh, you know, I'm praying for you. 
and uh let's just keep on going keep on pressing this coronavirus thing is about to pass pretty soon and uh we can go back you know to this life with a, a changed perspective and a, and a renewed mind and a new appreciation for the things we've taken for granted y'all have a wonderful day in jesus name